I'm going to code the ultimate desert temple update in just seven days, transforming it from this to a giant labyrinth filled with traps, new game mechanics, and an ancient sword with devastating power. Surely I didn't bite off more than I could chew again. Here's the game plan. I want the new desert temple to have a pit that drops into a procedurally generating vertical dungeon like end cities, but flipped upside down and underground. So let's build the first room. Every temple will drop you into this old bathhouse water. Kind of gross, but better than falling to your death, I suppose. I feel like it's missing something, like ancient pottery. After 15 minutes, I made three pot designs that I effortlessly coded into the game. Why are my pots laying eggs? Yeah, okay, so I had some trouble. First, I made the pots out of baby slimes, but then they would disappear when you play in peaceful mode, and I made them out of baby pigs, but loot tables don't work with baby animals, so now I'm using chickens, and all my pots are laying eggs everywhere. So I coded up a band-aid solution, and it works pretty good. But even though they're different than the way Mojang made it, I think these are still pretty cool since you can break them. This is the loot that I got after breaking 50 pots, and you'll notice something pretty strange. New lore, baby. Aliens built the desert temple confirmed. Anyway, let's build more rooms. This one, as you can see, is pretty simple. Just a couple of platforms, a little parkour jump that I actually somehow missed. And then you got these chests over here and all they contain is a simple note. Nice. So this next room doesn't have any crazy trap shenanigans or anything, but it does have something very controversial. Don't worry, it doesn't drop any shulker shells, but these guys are awesome in vertical environments, so I bet they're going to be great here too. Hopefully, because I put them literally everywhere in this room, and if I'm wrong about this being fun, this room's going to be terrible. That was a strong day one, but I want an even stronger day two by making the treasure room. The room that will hold the sandstorm sword. Of course, I could just put the sword in a chest, but no, no, I gotta be fancy. And you know what? It was worth it. Now, you can't just pull it out. What are you, King freaking Arthur? No, you need to solve a puzzle. And that's where the next room comes in. See, I got ChatGPT to write a three-page poem. The first page tells you about the Ankh, a new item in this data pack. The second page tells you about how you can trade it for the power of sand. <coughs> and the final page tells you that you're basically screwed because as soon as you flip to it, you get locked into a room that floods with lava that I effortlessly redstoned into the game. What the f- On uh, my first try, nonetheless. So this next room has a standard parkour and some spawners that spawn mummies. Now you're probably wondering how you get the ox. Well, you gotta kill a bunch of mummies to get ox shards. Then you combine nine of them to get an ox. These function exactly like a totem of undying, but they give you resistance when held in your offhand and rejuvenation when held in your main hand. Day two was heavily focused on coding and redstone, but I wanna spend the third day building more rooms. And you know what? I really found my stride because these are the best rooms that I've built so far. So here I have another very vertical room. The player can jump into the middle here and try to get to the top section, but let's say they, they drop down here because they mess up the parkour. If they come all the way over here, they have the chance of getting some more loot and you, you have a way of climbing back up and retrying the parkour. You can get to the top level here where you can again get some additional loot. And there's two bridges that connect other rooms, as well as a room on top. This next room is by far my favorite room in the entire data pack. Not because it relies on any crazy gimmick or anything, it's just so interconnected and confusing and claustrophobic. It's just really fun to explore, and it's so different than every other room in this data pack. I love it. I built one more room today, which presents an interesting choice. So you can come in, try to jump across these pads, and then you can open the chest and then grab whatever loot that you see here. Now, of course, making this jump is a little bit dangerous. You have the option, however, of shooting this wooden button up here with a bow. And when you do, it activates a bridge, but you gotta run here really fast because as soon as you do, your loot is gonna start draining out. So you gotta quickly grab whatever you can before it drains into the lava beneath. It's already day four and we haven't even built the surface level structure. Since there's no way I can do this on my own in time, I need to call in help from the greatest builder I have ever known. You're the man, Zepplington. While he works on that, I wanna spice things up by adding more interesting loot. So in addition to whatever you can find in the normal desert temple, 
you can now find Dune Strider boots. They have the defense stats of iron boots, but their durability of leather boots. They also give you a speed boost when you walk on any variant of sand, including soul sand. Also, I wasn't kidding when I said that aliens helped build the desert temple. So I think it makes sense that players can now find the deep dark explorer map, which will lead to an ancient city. And finally, by far the most important item in this data pack, the item that makes this dungeon actually fun is the potion of safe passage. This potion can be found in barrels and I designed the dungeon so that they are abundant and almost always within arm's reach. When consumed, they give you 10 seconds of levitation. You can either wait until the 10 seconds are up or press shift to cancel the levitation and gain 34 real life days of slow falling or slow falling until you touch the ground next, whichever comes first. That's enough coding. It is officially crunch time. So let's pick up the pace. I woke up at the butt crack of dawn and I built all day. Before today, we only had 10 rooms and we need so, so much more to make this not feel repetitive, especially since these are the rooms that are going to glue together the larger ones and actually give the underground structure its shape. After 12 hours, I built a grand total of 33 additional rooms. Nice. Now, obviously it would take too long to go through every single one. So let me just show you some of the highlights. For example, this room, which unfortunately doesn't work due to a bug. You're supposed to come over here and then everything is fine, completely safe. It's, it's lit up with these redstone torches. You open the chest, it triggers a skulk sensor, and then three mummies will drop behind you. So I'm gonna play the long game and keep this trapped in the desert temple because presumably someday it's gonna randomly start working <laughs> and it'll catch some people off guard. And then we have this room, which obviously is an homage to the original Desert Temple. Y'all know what's gonna happen if you step in that pressure plate. And then down here, we have another claustrophobic room with a bunch of different areas to explore, a little little interesting line of sight, some loot over there, and a barrel over here. And then over here, you got some innocent looking diamonds, but if you mine them, you blow up. I made a couple normal hallways. Some of them have arrow traps, which I, I will admit isn't super difficult. Oh, that one hit me. It's pretty easy to avoid. This room's a little bit weird and different. So there's some spikes at the bottom. I originally wanted it to be lava, but the whole room started catching on fire. You know how it is. And then there's this room, which is kind of goofy. So you know how there's these banners just all over the place around this temple? Well, I figure somebody has to be making this. So this is kind of the, the station where the, the poor worker would be stored away and, and forced to, you know, take the raw material and sit at their little yellow dye workstation and just make these banners day in and day out. Kind of a kind of a sad existence, but maybe they liked it, hopefully. Now, obviously these ancient desert people were very advanced. They knew their way around redstone. Not perfect, they, they, they knew some basic things, but then here with slime, they're trying to experiment and oh, this wasn't gonna go anywhere. Yes, yeah, so if you look around and see redstone that's terrible, then it, it was it's just part of the lore. It was on purpose, I tell you. Speaking of art, our friend Zeppelinton just got back to us and what he made is nothing less than incredible. I mean, just look at this place, the attention to detail, the shading on the floor, the terracotta, and the, the, the arrangement over here with the colored candles. The way that he uses just, just blocks in general, it's so creative and I, I would never even think that combinations like this would be possible. And the throne looks great as well. Zeppelinton just really put me to shame here. I mean, th this is incredible. And then every single corner has these observation towers that you can climb up and, and look out into the desert. Now, if you guys haven't already heard, scientists found a secret void in the Great Pyramids around 2017, and they're not sure what's in there, but Zeppelinton decided to do the same thing and included a burial chamber for the pharaoh. This is such a cool idea, I love it. And as you can see, it is protected by gold. It, it even has the little pharaoh head there. And then it's got whatever objects were on his person at the time. I did make one tiny adjustment, which was including this barrel here with a bunch of potions of safe passage. I figure it would be nice to have a safe place for people to experiment with this new potion in a place where, you know, obviously it's just not that dangerous. And then when they're ready, they can jump down into that pit below and then enter the dungeon that we've been making for this entire video. It's day six, which I spent most of my time doing the coding for the sword. Now when you hold the Ankh and approach the pedestal, the sword will begin to glimmer. And then when you throw it on the ground, this sequence will play out. 
Anyway, once you get the sword, you'll see that it does as much damage as a diamond sword, but with slightly faster attack speed. And when you right click, you summon a flying sand block that orbits around you. Also, there's no limit to how many you can summon. Look, I made a perfect circle in Minecraft without even trying. You just know there's a Mystic Cat somewhere trembling like a leaf. Now, you will also notice that the sand doesn't do any damage when it collides with entities. That's because it's inactive right now. If we press shift, then it begins to swarm the nearest enemies. Look at how terrifying that is. I feel so powerful. I'm about to wipe out this village. Believe me, this is as fun as it looks. I'm gonna spend the rest of the day messing with these jigsaw blocks, which basically tells the structure how to spawn during world generation. So I want each jigsaw block in a large room to connect to one of these rooms. It's the dawn of the final day, and now comes the fun part, playtesting. So unlike the previous desert temple that I just pasted into the world, this is actually naturally spawning in the world, and it looks like it blends in with the terrain so well. I This is a really encouraging sight already, the biggest thing that I'm worried about, however, is did the rest of the dungeon actually generate? We Oh, it works! You have no idea how good this feels. Look at how nicely this area just fit together. I feel like all the colors work well, the, the lava at the bottom there. I mean, whew. I don't want to pat myself on the back too much, but... Oh, there's a lot of shulkers down there. Ah, I'm stuck on the ceiling. No, no. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Enchanted golden apple save me. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that was so close. Okay, I will admit there's there's so many shulkers here. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is a good thing. Okay, I didn't want to say it. This is terrible. What was I thinking? God, let me down. So after looting this entire desert temple, this is the loot that I came away with. Pretty good. The biggest thing that I noticed is that enchanted golden apples, maybe I just got really lucky, but they seem to be super common. Now, as you'll notice, I have a ton of particles on me. That's because I, uh, <clears throat> I had to use two of them. Not necessarily because I'm bad at Minecraft, but maybe more so game design. You see, shulkers in the end cities, I realize now, work so well because they push the player upwards. The dungeon wants the player to get to the top, so it's like a river carrying the player through the currents. But in this environment, you're trying to get to the bottom, so I feel like the whole time I was trying to swim against the tide and, uh, it was so not fun. So I think that means we have to kill them all. I felt bad about killing all of them, so I kept one and I, I named him Kevin. I'm gonna release this data pack April 7th, and if you wanna play it right now, you can gain early access to it by supporting me on Patreon. Oh, and I think you're gonna like this video.